been bugging me about this car, if you will, for a while now. The Polaris Slingshot SLR. What it's an it? auto cycle. It's an auto cycle. Let's call it what it is. So, it's an auto cycle. It's crossed between an automobile and a motorcycle. Right. And so you've been driving this thing around. What's been the reaction from people on the street, your friends, your neighbors? You get high fives. People want to reach out the window and give you a fist bump. It's insanely fun. Totally impractical. It's got two wheels in the front, but just one in the back. Well, let's go check that out. This thing is a 300. 30, 20 inch tire. It is massive. Yeah, it's massive. Well, it has to do the job of two tires, right? That's also the drive wheel. There's only yep. one drive wheel and that ha that is the only thing that's uh, pushing you forward. So that's another reason it has to be fast. A rear wheel drive car with just one rear wheel. Drive. Right, which makes so, it an auto cycle, yes. not a car. Right. Can stop calling right. it a car. A vehicle, it's a trike, whatever you want to call it. Let's hop in, let's go for a okay. ride. It feels like a go-kart. It's got like this go-kart cage. There's obviously no door. Oh yeah, and there are seat belts. Uh, they uh, latch from the opposite side. Okay. Let's do this. I like the sound of that. Hi guys, we're actually in the podcast studio here. We had some audio issues with the slingshot shoot. It was quite loud and noisy and windy and bumpy. So unfortunately, we're gonna have to do our notes here. So Rick, you hopped in first. What'd you think? Well, my first impression upon looking at us driving the slingshot is at first, I think we look like a couple of badasses. And then I think we just look like total idiots. <laughs> By the way, my helmet is at least 17 years old. I got this when I bought my last motorcycle in 2001, which I never should have bought. That was a midlife crisis purchase while I was getting divorced. My third midlife crisis. I've only had two or three since. I'm up to maybe six or seven. Our whole sort of experience with this thing was, you love it on first sight. It's so cool looking like the Batmobile. It's unusual. You've almost never seen anything like it. Uh, and then after about an hour, you're like, man, my back hurts, it's windy, I got bugs up my nose. What am I doing here? Well, there's no windshield, right? Look at us, we're just running the, kind of in the open air. Um, you, you hear everything. Yeah. It is loud as hell on that, that thing. Say it again, I can't hear you! And the interesting point, point about the car is it's actually wider than a Corvette Z06. Because the front tires need to be spread out yeah. further. Yeah in order yeah. to provide the stability you need to, you know, get around curves with yeah. only one wheel in the back. I mean, that is a that is a weird and actually a fun sensation. When you're looking at that thing, you think yeah. it's gonna tilt yeah. uh, in the back. You feel like you're gonna lay down the back, right? Uh, but you never do. I really did love the driving dynamics. Mm. By the way, so we're looking at a point here where <laughs> we were at a stop sign and this guy and his wife in a Subaru we're delighted to see the slingshot and they wanted to ask us all about it. <laughs> if you want attention on the road, this will yeah. get it for you. So when I was driving this thing, um, I mean, I thought it was a pretty raw, rough experience. Uh, and it's supposed you to know, be. The steering's heavy, the brakes are heavy. It doesn't exactly handle that well, I didn't find it. That being said, it's a very visceral experience. I liked it. You know what, I had, I had a fun time with it. Uh, yeah, those things are all true. But you know, as I'm looking at this, we were driving around on a really nice fall day uh, on nice roads where we weren't getting stuck in traffic. We were enjoying some curves. This is definitely a fun thing to, to pilot. Look how happy I am. Yeah. I feel like I'm on a, I feel like I'm on a roller coaster yeah, with my arms up in the air. This thing's around $30,000. This um, model, you can get it cheaper. Yeah, so what do you think? First of all, would you recommend this? And second of all, is this kind of the next best thing for people who are used to motorcycles and want to kind of, you know, tail it back a little bit? I guess so. Safer. One thing I will say about motorcycles, uh, they're fun to, to they're fun to drive. Yeah. But yeah. they it sucks being on the back of a motorcycle. Well, you have no control. Mm -hmm. uh, you feel like you could go flying off at any moment. This is way more comfortable. So for a passenger, yeah. It's yeah. Great. So yeah. let's say you're a guy who you know likes to go motoring for an hour or two on Saturday. You might get your wife to go yeah. along with you in this thing. I suppose if you have a uh, disposable income and you like toys and you have a, you know, let's say a six car garage, this, yeah. this, this, this could occupy like the fifth or sixth spot in a six car garage, right? Yeah. It's cheaper than a boat. Yeah. But I'm glad things like this exist. Mm -hmm. I'm glad that, you know, some company decides to let the engineers dream this monster mm -hmm. up because it's fun to see, it's fun that it exists and there's a creative element to it. And uh, like I said, I like the driving dynamics. I'm with you. I think it'd be cool to see where this, this kind of auto cycle trend goes next.